If you want to watch somebody sucking hard at Genshin Impact, but on a really, really nice, fresh new game and smartphone, well, this is the video for you. Because Asus just launched its fresh new ROG Phone 8 and ROG Phone 8 Pro game and smartphones, and I've been testing out the ROG Phone 8 Pro for this in-depth review. And these game and blowers boast a gloriously new compact design, but still pack in all of those fresh game and smarts, including a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset for ultimate performance, an advanced thermal system with, of course, the usual cooler support, good bit of air trigger action, a 5,500 milliamp hour dual design battery, and some upgraded camera tech as well. For those who dare to spend all their savings on a game and smartphone. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. All righty, so first of all, what do you actually get in this rather complicated looking box? Uh, is this right? Oh no, I don't think that's right. That's definitely not right. All right, bollocks, let's try that one again. All right, so what have we actually got in here besides the ROG Phone 8 Pro? Well, you've also got a ROG 65 watt power adapter, a braided USB cable, if you bag yourself the Pro Edition model, you'll also get the fresh new Aeroactive X cooler and a snazzy wee purse to keep it in. Lush. And it looks like there's some sort of mini drawer here as well. And that's where you'll find a protective bumper for your fresh new ROG phone. And as far as I'm aware, unless there's any more secret compartments I haven't spotted, that's everything they've chucked in the box. All right, let's get this more for all set up. Mission brief. In future, humanity placed its trust in Supernova. An AI marvel. Well, this sounds familiar. That's ChatGPT in about 10 years. Touch the back of the phone to the sensor zone. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now I need to insert the phone into this bit of the box, apparently. What was the point of that then? Oh sh Did I f the AI yet? Oh yeah, looks like everything's all rosy again. Now the next mission, if you choose to accept it, is copy your apps from your old phone. Now the ROG Phone 8 Pro is once again a 6.78 inch behemoth, but they've actually managed to make it more compact and lighter than previous models. And the way they've done this is by really squeezing down those bezels, especially up above and down below the screen. So while I certainly wouldn't go so far as to say the ROG Phone 8 Pro is easy to use one-handed, it certainly is more manageable than before. It's not an absolute hand wrecker, basically. However, one disadvantage of that slimmed down top bezel is you now actually have a selfie cam orifice intruding there on the display rather than being scrolled away in that bezel. As for the rest of the ROG Phone 8 Pro, well, you've got a good bit of metal edging and then some frosted glass for that back end. If you want to grab this here Pro model, well, your choice of colours is this Phantom Black. Although if you get the regular ROG Phone 8, well, you can either grab it in Phantom Black or Rebel Grey. So no bright, bold offerings this year, but here ho. And there are some differences in the design between the Pro model and the regular ROG Phone 8. As you can see, they're more of a glossy finish in the top section here for the regular ROG Phone 8. You've got a little bit of branding, the ROG logo, etc. But ASUS has been incredibly restrained when it comes to that design compared with some game and blowers. But one undeniably funky design element you'll only find on this here Pro model is the Anime Vision Dot Matrix shenanigans. And this is very cunningly squirreled away, so when the lights aren't active, you can't actually see them at all. And that Anime Vision shenanigans is completely customizable within the ROG settings, as you would expect. So you can have it popping on whenever the screen is off, or alternatively, whenever the screen is on. Or both, if you want to absolutely sap this thing's battery. You can also have a wee camera icon pop up whenever you're taking a shot, including a very handy timer countdown. I particularly like the incredibly joyful wee smiley face that pops up whenever you're taking a photo. I thought this only pops up after you hit the shutter button, so you'll have to take a couple of shots could possibly help attract the attention of a small and ruly child. And you've got a small variety of different animations to choose from that can pop up whenever you're playing a game, for instance. But what I like most about the anime vision shenanigans is you can basically use it as a funky glorified notifications light. Quite handy if you want that screen down so it doesn't distract you too much, but you still want to be informed when something important pops in. 
And for some actions like taking a photo, you've got the option of actually creating your own custom animation. You can import an image, otherwise just scribble one yourself. So yeah, you can be as immature as you like. And the ROG Phone 8 Pro is pleasingly hardy as well. So you've got Gorilla Glass Victus 2 up front, should hopefully stave off scratches. And this phone is also IP68 water and dust resistant for, I believe, the first time, as far as my knackered old memory can recall. So overall, with the exception of that annoying selfie cam orifice up top, it's a bit of a cracking redesign. Anyway, that's enough banging on about the hardware. Let's move on to the software on the ROG Phone 8 Pro. And of course, you've got Android 14 straight out the box. And ASUS is promising four years of security updates and at least two OS updates, so 15 and then 16. Hopefully we'll get more than that though, because some premium priced rivals come with three, four, even more years of OS updates. And Google's promising bloody seven. And as always, ASUS offers you the choice when you set up your ROG Phone 8 Pro if you want to have a ROGified version of Android, or if you'd rather just have a more stock affair. As you can see, I've gone full ROG with a ROG wallpaper, ROG icons. These do clash somewhat with the more regular icons. It's certainly a mishmash of styles, but you can change that if you want. And thankfully, there's not too much crapware pre-installed on the ROG Phone 8 Pro, just the likes of Facebook. You can bugger right off. You've got Instagram, Spotify, a couple of other bits pre-installed, but as I say, not too bad. And the ROG Phone 8 Pro sports the usual in-display optical fingerprint sensor. It's a bit of a cracker, works quite fast. And that's only usually fold when your thumbs are all dripping wet or just caked in crud. And oh yeah, while the regular ROG Phone 8 comes with a pretty generous half a terabyte of storage, that's upgraded to a full terabyte here on the Pro. But of course, there's bugger all micro SD memory card support. But anyway, that's enough wibbling on. Let's actually get some gaming on the go. And when you want to do that, you want to dive on into the Armory Crate. This doesn't appear to have been tweaked much at all for the ROG Phone 8 Pro. You've got fast access to all your games. If you tap scenario profiles, you can fully set them up. You can choose from the usual variety of performance modes and customize the likes of the air triggers. And because of that selfie cam intrusion, you can change up the display mode now. So for instance, you can shift everything down so it doesn't get in the way and obscure everything. You can also center everything so it's all nice and balanced. And inside of the Armoury Crate is also where you can set up the likes of Anime Vision and your Aeroactive Cooler X if you've got this Pro model that comes bundled. And if you want to replay all that randomness when you first set up the smartphone, then that's also an option. And as ever, when you're actually playing a game, just swipe down from one of the top corners and you'll yank out that Game Genie mode. Now in here, you've got all of the usual features you'll find on a ROG phone. So for instance, you can quickly and easily swap up the actual game and performance mode. But I'll definitely be leaving that on the old X mode for Genshin Impact. You can block notifications, you can stick some real-time info on the screen. Customise those air triggers up top with a quick tap here as well. All you need to do, turn this on and then drag these wee icons about and that will determine what the left trigger and the right trigger will do. And in here you can also set up motion control if you fancy a bit of that and also customise the cooler buttons. You've got a pair of those on the back end of that AeroActiveX cooler. Yeah, you can also record the action, you can stick a crosshair in the middle of the screen if you're playing an FPS. Again, fully customizable. But ASUS has also chucked a couple of interesting new features into Game Genie for this one. And you'll find these scrolled away here inside of XSense. Now, as you can see right there, this is still in beta, so not quite 100% there, but definitely well worth checking out. So, for instance, there's the new auto pickup feature, which is particularly handy and Genshin Impact just grabs everything that you come across. No need to tap the wee pop-up icons. You've also got an auto run mode. And this pops up yet another on-screen icon, just what we needed. You can drag this around anywhere you like. And then during your game, just give this a wee poke and your character will immediately start running. I say immediately, sometimes it does actually take a couple of taps for it to work, hence the whole beta thing. It's kind of handy if you want to, you know, have your character running off in a set direction while you go take a piss or whatever. I did notice the character kind of veers to the right a wee bit when they are running, so yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it's there if you need it. Now, if you're playing Genshin Impact and you just want to bash a load of griblies, you don't really give a flying toss about any of the story, well, speed up conversations might be right up your alley. This does exactly what you'd expect, just saves you from frantically bashing that screen in order to get through all of these, frankly, nonsensical diatribes. But my favourite feature in XSense 2.0 is definitely Quick Escape. This is essential in Genshin if you're battling against one of those annoying griblies who can freeze you on the spot. This can automatically free you so you're not frantically prodding that display. 
And that's one feature that can be a real lifesaver and it seems to work perfectly well even in this beta form as well so definitely check that one out. And if you happen to find yourself stuck in a particular mission or quest or what have you, well, another feature you should check out is AI Grabber. This pops a wee red box up onto the screen. You can drag this around. And once that's in the right place, just select all the text you're interested in and then you can immediately do a web search, find yourself a guide and then work out what it is you're actually supposed to be bloody doing. So as always, Izu's absolutely smashing it when it comes to the game and features and it's this kind of stuff that really sets the ROG phones apart from all of its rivals. Now ROG phones always come packing a pretty glorious display for all of your gaming needs and the ROG phone 8 Pro and the regular 8 no exception. You got a 6.78 inch Samsung E6 AMOLED panel on both of these gaming blowers. Certainly sizable enough to give you a good view of the action and the full HD plus resolution 2400 by 1080 pixels. Keeps everything reasonably crisp though it's kind of a shame it wasn't Quad HD. It's an LTPO display so the refresh rate can automatically adjust from 1Hz all the way up to 120Hz or you can manually bump it up to 165Hz if you're playing a supported game. And that peak brightness hits around 2,500 nits. Absolutely eye searing, so no worries if you're gaming outdoors, even if you haven't been plunged into perpetual darkness like us Brits here in wintertime. And yeah, that selfie cam orifice does slightly intrude on the action when you go full screen, but honestly, it's not as invasive as Apple's dynamic island bollocks, so I wouldn't stress about it. And both the ROG Phone 8 and the ROG Phone 8 Pro sport a stereo speaker setup as usual, but they're not both front firing speakers as you used to get with those big thick bezels. Unfortunately, the bottom speaker is now downwards facing or off to the side a bit, I guess, if you're in gaming mode. And this does mean you can accidentally muffle it a wee bit when you are gaming, but thankfully I didn't find this was ever much of an issue for me. That audio still packs a punch on the top volume, comes through nice and clear. You do have a headphone jack as usual, but if you are gaming and you want to use a pair of wide headphones, you'll probably want to get the Aeroactive cooler on the go because this diverts the jack down to the bottom edge so that cable's not sticking out and impaling your hand. You've got all usual audio wizard shenanigans, including various presets and an equalizer so you can fine tune to your heart's content got full Dirac virtual support for that headphone spatial sound. And yes, all the usual codec support, aptX adaptive, aptX lossless if you're using Bluetooth, etc, etc. Of course, none of this would actually matter if the performance was absolute cack, but you know that's not the case because Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has been stuffed inside of the ROG Phone 8 and the ROG Phone 8 Pro. And it's backed by 16 gigs of RAM in the regular ROG Phone 8, while the Pro model upgrades that to 24 gigs. 20 bloody four. So yeah, unsurprisingly, the Pro model spaffs out a pretty respectable Geekbench score. Not actually the best I've seen out of an 8 Gen 3 device, but right up there. And to really put this thing through its paces, of course, I ran Genshin Impact on the highest possible graphics setting at 60 frames per second. I turned on basically all of the features I could find. I had the ROG Phone 8 Pro set to X mode. And unsurprisingly, that performance was almost flawless. I did notice a couple of tiny wee judders in the gameplay, but we're literally talking over the course of about five or six hours of solid gaming. Apart from that, the frame rate remains perfectly fluid, even when things got proper bat mental. And what really impressed me was just how cool the ROG Phone 8 Pro remained, even after gaming for a couple of hours on Genshin. That's partly down to the efficiency of that 8 Gen 3 and partly down to Asus's advanced thermal system, as they call it. As well as a dedicated vapor chamber, you've got graphite sheets, you've got a special boron nitride thermal compound to help really shift that heat away from the chipset and a fresh new rapid cooling conductor. Very swank. Now, if you've got one of the older ROG Aeroactive coolers, well, the bad news is you might as well hoi it in the bin because it won't work with the ROG Phone 8 or the ROG Phone 8 Pro. That only works with the Aeroactive X cooler, which comes bundled with the Pro Edition. It's quick and easy to slip on as always, just tap the SWE button up top, plugs into that edge mounted USB port. And the Aeroactive X cooler may be slightly smaller than previous models, but it now has a faster fan speed as well as a larger cooling area. Unfortunately, the fan is clearly audible when it is plugged in, as you can hear. So if, for instance, you are gaming in bed next to somebody who's actually trying to get some kip, they might get slightly annoyed and give you an elbow in the nads. And this right here is just on the regular cool mode as well. If we actually stick it on frosty mode, things get proper serious. 
And as I said, the ROG Phone 8 Pro's built-in cooling mechanism is good enough to keep Genshin Impact running even for a long, long time, even on the highest possible graphics settings, X mode active, all that good stuff. But you know, if you want to be charging the phone at the same time as you're gaming, then maybe the Aeroactive Cooler might be a worthy purchase. And of course, it does add some extra features in as well. You've got two customizable buttons, so you can flip between those and the air triggers. And this also adds a nifty wee kickstand which you can use to prop up the ROG Phone 8 Pro which is quite handy if you're kicking back with a bit of Netflix or you're just desperately waiting for the latest super long Genshin Impact cutscene to end. And yes, you do have that very helpful headphone jack extension as well. i got to say though, I didn't always get on with the air triggers here on the ROG Phone 8 Pro. I found that depending on the way I gripped it, sometimes I would go to mash those shoulder buttons and nothing would happen. I'd have to adjust my grip the way I was actually holding the phone and then it was working fine. But yeah, they're not quite as sensitive as I would have liked. But yeah, maybe it's just an iPhone style situation where I'm holding it wrong, who knows. Now as for the battery life, well the ROG Phone 8 and the ROG Phone 8 Pro both spot a 5500 mAh dual design battery. It's slightly smaller now that the phone is more compact, but thanks to the energy efficient chipset you'll still get some pretty strong battery life. Nothing outstanding however, so the likes of Genshin Impact for instance with those maxed out settings and with no Aeroactive Cooler installed, you get just over 4 hours of gameplay. Because if you actually attach that Aeroactive Cooler then this does definitely make an impact, you get just over 3 hours of Genshin action with that on Smart Cooling Mode. But then of course the advantage of that cooler is you can just plug in a USB cable, get the phone charging while you're gaming and it won't heat up. And if you're not actually gaming on this thing, you're actually just using it as a smartphone, well the good news is it'll happily last you a full day, even with plenty of mixed use, lots of screen on time. I've had no issues there whatsoever. And when you do need to plug it in, where well, you've got that 65 watt wide fast charger, not as fast as again as some smartphones that we've seen recently, but the good news is it only takes about 40 minutes to fill this thing up. Not too terrible at all. And you do actually have full wireless charging here on the ROG Phone 8 and the ROG Phone 8 Pro. I did find this was a wee bit fiddly on my personal charging pan. I had to get it in exactly the right position, otherwise it just would not charge. So you might want to keep tabs on that one. And then let's finish off this lovely Wii review with a squint at the camera tech. And we got slapped on the back end of the ROG Phone 8 and the ROG Phone 8 Pro as a triple lens setup. The primary shooter here is a 50 megapixel Sony IMX890 sensor, as was also found in the excellent OnePlus 11. And that's backed by a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter and a 32 megapixel telephoto snapper. And I really like Isus's camera app. It's simple, it's streamlined, it's easy to get on with. You can drag down the camera settings like so for fast access, quickly and easily swap between those three different lenses. You've got all the necessary camera modes, the likes of a portrait mode and a night mode and a few other bits squirreled away in here including a dedicated pro mode. Although there doesn't appear to be an option here for shooting raw format. But on the regular auto mode, the ROG Phone 8 Pro is certainly a decent everyday snapper, certainly as far as gaming smartphones are concerned. You've actually got some 6-axis hybrid gimbal stabilisation smarts for that primary shooter. Helps to counter handshake, particularly useful in low light shooting. Though you will still get some blur of course if your subject is in motion. There's just a few sample shots that I snapped in my first few days with the ROG Phone 8 Pro. Overall, I was happy enough. And if you swap to that video mode, you can record at 4K resolution at 30 or 60 frames per second. Otherwise, you can bump all the way up to 8K resolution if you happen to own an 8K display. But that front facing camera does only record at full HD resolution sadly, but it does a perfectly good job. The built in mics on the ROG Phone 8 Pro do a good job of clearly picking up your voice. Those visuals aren't too cack. And there you have it my lovelies, that in a delicious wee nutshell is the fresh new ROG Phone 8 and ROG Phone 8 Pro. Absolutely packed to the tits with excellent hardware and some fantastic gaming features that will really give you that edge. Now it'd be great to hear your thoughts on the ROG Phone 8 and ROG Phone 8 Pro down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you!